I'm backing up my truck, I'm gonna hook it up, loading up my boat with all my gear. I've been working hard all week, trying to make ends meet, spending time wishing I was fishing. Oh, Terry Wickstrom wants to take you fishing. Gather up your gear and come along. Well, Terry Wickstrom wants to take you fishing. This is Terry Wickstrom. Join Karen Collum, Greg Collagio, and me as we take you to some of our favorite fishing spots from Colorado to Minnesota, the Arctic Circle to Central America and beyond as we revisit episodes of Mountain States Fishing and Angling Adventures Television on the best of fishing with Terry Wickstrom. I'm with John Eggers of Eggers Guaranteed Guide Service. There you go. Glad oh. to meet you, John. Good to meet you, Greg. I've been looking forward to this for a couple of years now. We're in southeastern Minnesota, which is home to a lot of trophy stream trout fishing, hundreds of miles. Where, yeah. Where are, what's our game plan today? Well, today, Greg, what I plan on doing is uh, getting you acquainted with just a little bit of everything that we have here, you know. We're going to try to do it in a mad rush, so. And we're going to start out on a small stream here in southeastern Minnesota. This particular stream is uh, Spring Valley Creek. And this is a regulated stream. You're going to need the permission from the farmers and landowners to fish it. We was lucky enough to get that. But it's also got special regulations where there's slot limits of how many you can keep and what or the size limits you can keep and uh, catch and release. So there's a good chance we're going to get some large trout here. We're going to start out on this big uh, or on this small stream to look for some larger trophy trout. Then as we progress in the day, we're going to move on up to the upper branches of the Root River. And uh, there we're going to see some real pretty country. That's going to be more for our aesthetic value. To get into the, like, uh, the cliffs and the bluffs and uh, see some prettier trout. And then later on, we're going to take a canoe adventure on down to some of the more remote parts of the Root River to see if we can get into some other trophy trout or some other uh, untouched trout action. Okay, well that sounds like a good plan. Another thing I should mention is that John makes the bow spinner and when he told me to come down, don't bring any tackle, that's all we're using is these spinners. A lot of people are, come here for fly fishing, but you don't have to fly fish. Uh, that's correct, when I take people out, my guaranteed service is, is it's actually a spin fishing service. We usually don't touch fly rods because uh, I've developed uh, for spin fishing I find that spin fishing is probably the most productive and easiest way to get people right into fishing it's very it's a very inexpensive way of fishing uh, you can actually start producing fish with uh, as little as a, as a cheap open or closed face reel you know you'll catch a few you probably won't catch many but you can actually catch them it's, this way it's an easy way to fish very easy you simply just 
tie a spinner on the line and cast out. And uh, what we've done is at Ager Spinners and Spin Fishing Service, we've created the Super Bow Spinner out of all American made uh, material and uh, uh, surgical precision, matching the parts with surgical precision and using real gold and real silver on a diamond hammered blade that reflects in all directions. So we get maximum reflection, an extremely well balanced lure, and this thing is just a trout fishing or trout catching machine. Well, I know you've caught thousands of fish on them and I'm looking forward to doing it. Let's get going. Okay. We're gonna have a hole. Right between the, the wood yep. and the weeds on the right? Yep, that whole section from right to left bank looks good to me. I, I would say probably in the middle of the rapids and that log, he'll probably sit under the log. Ooh, just that ain't bad. Move a little fast through there right now okay. so you can... I like one hit it. Hard to say, I didn't see the water boil, but it's very possible. There we go. Oh, excellent. That should produce. Should, in our mind. Yep, it did. It did, there you go. And this ain't a bad fish. Oh, a nice one, a jumper, he come off. <laughs> did you get that? I had another hit right away, too. That thing was about three feet in the air and doing acrobats. He went into aerial battle and uh, he lost. Claim, now, no closer than the length of your pole. Slide him over to rapids and right around behind you. That's a little guy. A little one? Small one. Looked to me like he'd go about 12, 13 inches. Well, ain't bad. Nevertheless. <laughs> That's pretty good size though, eh? Right? Oh yeah. That's a nice one. That, that would be a very, very good trout for keeping. There he is. These fish are just beautiful. In these small the, streams, they really get fat. You notice how well fed he is. He's got a good the, belly. There's a lot of fish, too. A lot of fish. Uh, something uh, I'm going to probably mention later, if I, if I forget to, I'd like to say it now, is Minnesota has actually uh, a lot of streams, I'm not going to say how many miles of them, that are naturally reproductive streams that the trout can actually spawn in. Unlike some of the closer states around where everything's just put and take. Some of these trout we have, even though they're browns, which isn't native to Minnesota, they are naturally born in our waters. So that's kind of nice too. Yeah, that is a nice one. Whoa, -ho. bring him over here? Slide him just like you did the other one, over the top of the rapids. Down here, huh? Yep. Let him come to it, he'll, there you go. Well, you can bring him up in here if he wants that's to. That's what I think might be easier. Yep, whatever is good for him. Wow, that's a beautiful fish. That is another beauty of a fish. Look at that. These Perfectly are marked. If you look at the rosettas, the white rosettas around the marks, then we got the beautiful blazing orange uh, fins here. Beautiful fish. And this boy Man. will be ready for uh, fall uh, spawning. That's just the right size. So I like to see these let go under that size. And on that one, you caught him on a gold and silver Super Bowl. Gorgeous. Here we go. Whoa. You didn't have to tell him twice. He's out of there. <laughs> you put me on the spot there, kid. You're welcome. Way to go. Now here you'd made three casts in this, this pool, and you'd probably been sailing over the top of him. By using a heavier spinner, when you slowed down, it went down just a little bit deeper. Right in their and living room. And that was room. the thing that triggered him. Yeah. It was just too tempting for him to pass up. Your approach would always be from downstream against the current. Always cast your, you know, your spinners upstream, retrieve with the current. Trying to keep the speed consistent so it looks natural and the blades are turning. Right. You know, because the fish always face into the current. Your trout, I don't care if it's a trout or a bass or whatever, but they always face into the current. That's the natural way. Nothing comes at them. You know, all their food and everything comes down the current, is washed into them. 
Nothing comes at them from behind except danger or something that can get away from them. So if, uh, you know, if you, you can take and almost triple the amount of fish you catch by just turning around, if you're not doing it, turn around, put your spinner, your plug, your worm, I don't care what it is, even if it's not my Super Bow spinner, cast the thing upstream and come with the current. That one thing will increase your, your uh, production by just uh, exponentially. It's good information. Basic stuff, but very important. But oh, what in the world? Here we just, <laughs> they're jumping right in front of us. Oh, look at that, right there he is. Guess what I got here though? I got a chub here. Well, it is. How about the creek that? chub. They couldn't tell on camera. You should have said it was a trout. <laughs> it's a tagger trout. <laughs> I'll be darned. Even those things, it's spinners. Me and Terry Wickstrom used to, years ago when we were kids, uh -huh. back in the Hibbing, Minnesota area, we used to, just for something go to do, go trout. fish creek chubs right off the culvert. There hasn't been, I don't think there's a fish out there that I haven't caught on a spinner. You know, uh, yeah, suckers will hit spinners. I was just spinners. gonna say suckers. Yeah, in the spring of the year, what's really fun is uh, uh, when the suckers start spawning, you use a large... Uh, <laughs> Came apart. That's uh, a blooper segment. <laughs> who, who made that pole? Who made this rod? <laughs> I thought what I was I was gonna say something, but then I just realized that's that rod I made, so it's gotta be your fault. It can't be the rod. This is his custom rod. It's a good rod, but evidently I didn't have a push. No, that's all your fault. It's not the rod. <laughs> Did you see that? That's a nice fish there. If you have your line, the length of your pole, then you can just kind of tilt your pole up and your fish will come right to you. Yeah, you tip them right up on their back like that, they'll, they'll calm right down. And it's surprising, a fish this size was in that shallow water and we didn't even see him until he decided to go for a spinner. And he hit it the first time, if you, see my, if you remember my oratory, and then, uh, and then I thought uh, he wouldn't come back again, but he turned around and come right after it. Let's see how we're going to do here. What do you say, guy? And away he goes. Good job. Nice fish. There, now I see you land this critter. <laughs> no closer than the end of your pole, the length of your pole now. Oh, that's a nice fish. He touched him. Am I in your way? That was quick. I didn't want him to get away. <laughs> Well, if worse comes to worse, you can always use your hat as a net. <laughs> I notice you, you don't use a net. You don't recommend one? or um, If I'm going to be taking a lot of pictures, if I'm not going to be keeping the fish, I don't like the net because they really get tangled up in it. It can really make a mess. Aren't they gorgeous? Uh, you know, that river? fish was not going to... Is that, that where we are, the Root we're River? We're in the Root River. Root River in southeastern Minnesota. Lots of fish like that. And there's still one in there. Yeah. <laughs> nice one. So we're here in uh, kind of late June. How long uh, is the fishing pretty consistent throughout the whole summer? Uh, it is. Uh, up this high in the river now is when the water gets starts getting real low and clear, where we're standing will be real deep in moss. Okay. And although there'll be fish here, it's extremely difficult to fish and I don't it doesn't make any difference what method you use, you know, short of trying to float a fly over the top of it, it becomes really hard to fish. And typically the large fish will abandon it too. They'll focus on maybe a few holes like this deep one up against the, against the brush there. But it'll get to the point where it's really spotty on how to find fish okay. in here. You'll be fighting with moss, you'll be fighting with slime. So what you do is you go downriver. You know. Get away from it, yeah, yep. relocate. And then, go, then you find your fish again. Go to where the fish are. Yeah, if it's not good for you, generally it's not good for the fish. That's it. Excellent cast. Okay. 
See, he wants to come to you. He's just jumping right in your lap there. <laughs> Gorgeous fish. You can, go to, you can go to an aquarium and not see prettier fish. Just beautiful. I could catch these all day long. Well, let's do that. <laughs> Maybe I can't. Maybe I will. I will see. There she goes. So t tell me a little bit about your guide service. Well, it's kind of unique, really. It's, you know, I've always kind of wanted to have a service where I could guarantee that uh, people would catch fish. Here's one right here. Here we go. <laughs> and, you know, we want to... Hey, I'm trying to do an interview here. Oh, what? okay. So, uh, you know, it's really hard to talk and play a fish, too. <laughs> So what we did, you know, I, I've had, I've taken a lot of, I've hired a lot of guides over the years, and, and you know, it, it's really disappointing to pay, you know, 150 to 300 dollars for a guide and go out there and catch one or two fish, and basically kind of get skunked. And yet you can see where the guide needs needs to have money too. So what I've done is I've, my guide service is guaranteed. Where I actually guarantee that people will catch fish. Isn't that the name of it? Yep, guaranteed guide service. You know, you got to have it. <laughs> you got to have a name, so that's good. It tells you what it is. And the way it works is, uh, it's just forty dollars for to cover gas and mileage minimum, mm -hmm. and then twenty dollars a fish, up to sixteen fish, which will come to a total of three hundred sixty dollars. And that's per person. That's per person, right? And that's a. It's actually per. It's actually per two. Gr a group of two people. Okay. Well, you did good today, and uh, we'll have all the information at the end of the show in the credits on John's guide service. We'll even have a little information right here, where you can get a hold of him and do some good trout fishing in southeastern Minnesota. Right, him cowboy. <laughs> you know I. I didn't mean to get this far ahead, everybody, but I was snagged. You got him. Yeah, I was snagged, so I had to come up here. That'd be close enough. I wouldn't get him any closer than that. Now, don't grab your line. <laughs> Upside down, just the way you taught me. Well, I don't know. After a couple of times <laughs> I seen in that net, I'm... I don't think he would have got <laughs> off. That boy's hooked. Yeah. There it is. It's official. Another root... Ooh! Root River Brown. There it goes. <laughs> Oh, he's got a nice one behind me. That's a good fish. How big, that's about what, 13, 14? Yeah, I'd say that one's about 14 there. We're starting to get into some trout now. That's a nice looking fish. Want me to hold the, the net too? Yeah, if you could. Trouble is the net's attached. Yeah. Made a heck of a mess here. Now that is a nice trout. That's a nice one. What is it, about 14 inches? Yeah, that one will go about 14. 14. That's a that's real a good, good trout there. Nice brown. And just hold the pole still there, and I'll show you something. He'll go right between these two eyes of the pole. Hold it right up like that. Mm -hmm. And our fish is going to be from eye to eye there. And we'll release him. About a 14? Yep. It's a nice fish. I believe these two eyes here are are just about 15 inches apart, so he'd be just about 14. Yeah, you're into a good 16, 17 inch fish here. This is what you come for. Swing him around this way towards me. Hey. I'm gonna put him in the net so he can get this one in. You don't even need to touch your reel anymore. Just let your rod do all the work. Don't hog him in. Nope. If he wants to run, you can let him. He's getting tired now. Nice old cagey brown. Just a little more, crank, one more crank on your reel. He's nailed good. We'll get him. Wow. 
off. <laughs> All right, John. <laughs> he put the spin doctor put me on a nice fish here. We'll take him out of the net and you can hold on to him. This is where it gets tricky. Yes. It might does. have to be fast with the camera because we're gonna let this guy go and it might be faster than we think. I'm proud of you, Greg. I'm proud of you. You put me on him. We knew the big fish would come eventually, we gotta keep working. They don't just jump into the net, you know. Isn't that a beauty? That's my biggest brown ever. There's a lot of people that come down to these streams and will fish for years and not catch one like that. Southeastern Minnesota, we're fishing near Preston. And I'm with guide John Eggers of Guaranteed Guide Service. You don't have to have a real little offering. No. Nope. I gotta let this fish go. It's Using just large gorgeous. spinners for trout is the only Thank way to go. You. You're welcome. There he goes. John, thank you so much for a great time. And uh, we're staying at the Country Trail Inn and Suites here in Preston. Great place to stay. Great guide. A lot happening around here. It's a happening place. And don't forget our canoe service from Root River Outfitters. Yes, they, they helped us to... out there. And uh, we'll see you next week on Angling Adventures. <laughs>